Welcome to another fun art project with Ms. Arpeza, boys and girls. And today we're going to be making the blue dog based on George Rodrigue's Blue Dog Tiffany. And uh, this uh, series was actually inspired by a Loop Guru legend. Okay, it was a legend, a French legend, where it was uh, like a little boogeyman that would come and scare kids at night that were misbehaving. So the Blue Dog series is based on that... Uh, legend and as you can see we're going to be using blue for our little dog but not just blue but all kinds of cool colors and we're also going to be making another dog and this other one we're going to be using warm colors so let's go ahead and take a look and see all the details behind it and get started with our pictures have fun okay so to get started with our tiffany painting we're going to start off with the nose area which is going to be somewhere towards the center of the paper. And we're going to go ahead and draw an oval shape for the nose. We're going to bring down the bottom section for that space here as a frown. And we're going to curve it up to the top for her little snout on both sides, making this look like the mouth and her head in the middle here. Now she had nice big round eyes so we're gonna make two circles that are nice and bold and sharp so we're gonna make another circle within with some little triangles right around to show that nice piercing look. Almost like a ghost look. I do want to keep these areas black so I'm just gonna fill those in with my black And the nose too, but I'll eventually get to that later. Now I know that she also had some really, really kind of wavy, dark outlines around the eyes. Like dark bags to show that morbid look. And right above, she had some little eyebrows. To emphasize on her nice, sharp stare. Now we're also going to draw a short little top line that is going to connect her ears all the way to the top. So make sure you come all the way to the top corner of your paper on one side and all the way to the top corner of your paper on the opposite side. And these lines are going to come down and curve to make a zigzag towards the end on both sides. Curve and zigzag. And of course our little triangular area for the inside of the ear. Okay, now we're going to move on to the body. And for the body, we're going to curve down two lines on each side with a little paws right at the bottom here. And a short little line that goes to the top and across for the tummy. And I also add some little toes here and there with back of her foot showing on one side and back of her leg showing on the opposite side. Okay, now we're done with the basic shape of our little Tiffany. Now we can add some props. Let me sh just show you guys what I came up with here so you guys can get some ideas. So there is my Tiffany with a teddy bear ready to go to sleep. My Tiffany with a little bowl of food and a bone, a bow tie, polka dots on the background. Here's my little football Tiffany. And my queen Tiffany with a crown on top of her head, a heart on her chest, a cape, and a earth. This one is my basketball Tiffany, where she has a band around her head, a jersey, and a little hoop on the background. My lovey-dovey Tiffany with lots of hearts all the way around. Here is a lollipop Tiffany. And an ice cream Tiffany with a cherry on top. I also made a little cupcake Tiffany. An angel Tiffany with wings, some clouds, some stars on the background. And I even added some fangs and a little bow. Here's my ballerina Tiffany with a little tutu and her little ballerina shoes and a bow on top of her head. Here is my little unicorn Tiffany with a horn on top of her head, a heart on her chest, and a rainbow. What about a Dracula Tiffany? Look at that. With a cape and a moon, some stars on the background. Here's my superhero Tiffany with a disguise and a T for Tiffany on her chest along with the cape and some stars. 
This one's kind of my mesmerized Tiffany, where there's swirls all over the place. A butterfly Tiffany with some antenna, a flower on her chest, and some wings. Here's my tap dance Tiffany with a little hat, a cane, and a little bow tie. This is my little vegetarian Tiffany. She's eating grass. Here's my artist Tiffany. She's painting along her beautiful pictures. And my bowling Tiffany right here. So go ahead and add some props now. Let's go ahead and make it nice and creative and beautiful. so here we go guys now we have our finished uh, Tiffany and before we color her in I just wanted to see if we can use a special color scheme for our Tiffany um, so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to make two versions of a different dog so we already have Tiffany here we're gonna set her aside for now and when I learned about George Rodrigue I really really was inspired to create my own version of my own dog and I came up with this one here which is called Max my Max is uh, a little droopy he has uh, long cheeks that kind of droop down as well as the eyes and the long ears more like a hush puppy so when I learned about George Rodriguez uh, blue dog I was like well I can definitely create my own version of my own pet as well so this is the one that I came up with and so we're gonna draw this one out and we're actually going to be using cool colors for Tiffany and warm colors for our Max okay so let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can draw out Max Max is not um, as complicated to have so much detail it's gonna be really quick so let's take our sheet of paper and draw it out with our marker. We're going to start off with the nose. So towards the center of your paper. Just kind of point towards the center more or less. And draw out the nose, which is going to be a curved line that goes to the top. And bends towards the bottom, just like that. Okay, and that's for the nose. Now we're going to go ahead and droop down the cheeks. So we're going to bring down a large frown which is going to connect to the cheeks towards the top on one side and towards the top on the other side as well. So we know that these would be the little cheeks there with the bottom of the mouth. Now this side here is going to come around and droop down for one of the eyes, like half an oval. And we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side, curve down for another oval. Right in the center here, we're going to draw the eyeball, so like half a circle, on both sides. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our little image here. I have a little glare happening here on the eyes and the nose. So, I like to keep that glare. I'm going to draw a circle and a smaller circle inside the eyes for the glare. So, I'm going to keep that area blank. And on the nose, I'm also going to draw like an oval shape for the glare. I definitely want to keep that glare there. And we're just going to draw a little eyebrow right above or on top of the eyes. And the top of the head, which is going to carve right on the top. Okay, that line there is going to connect to the ears. Instead of bringing them all the way to the top corner, this time we're going to go all the way down and curve it up to the cheek. So make sure you come all the way to the end of the paper and curve it up. On the opposite side as well, we're going to come all the way to the end of the paper and curve it up. So there we have the ears for our little doggy. Now we're just going to draw the paws, which are going to kind of connect towards the center like a U-shape. And we can even draw the little toes. Okay, so if you guys want to add some props on this one, you could. Go ahead and feel free to draw whatever you want. I'm going to add a little bow tie on mine. You can add anything you want. And I have a lot of space here at the top, so I'm going to add a nice big hat. Cute, cute, cute. I'm going to add a little flower coming out from the hat. And there you go. So there's my cute little Max right there. Okay, and for our color palette, we're going to be using some warm colors for Max and some cool colors for Tiffany. So let's go ahead and take a look at what those colors are and separate our color schemes with our crayons okay so for our warm colors we're gonna go ahead and 
take a look at what those colors are. And I've already kind of separated those here. Let's take a look and see what those color schemes would involve. We're going to start with the red tones. Anything that you can find that looks reddish to you. Okay, so let's go ahead and find all the red tones. This one is more like a red violet. Okay, it looks very much like the red. So we're going to separate those into our warm color scheme. It can be burgundy, like a maroon color. It can be um, regular, just red. Okay, red violet. So we have the reds. Any red tones that you can find in your color palette. Any rose or pink tones as well. So let's find anything that looks pinkish because red and white mixed together makes pink. So we're going to find any rosy or pinkish tones and put them in our warm color palette. Orange tones will also work as a warm color palette as well. So anything orangey. So orange, of course, red, orange, yellow, orange, uh, almost like an apricot color. Or if you have any tan colors that are a little bit more on the neutral side, like it can be a melon color, a tan or khaki color, those would also be considered warm colors. So let's put those down as well. And yellow, any tone of yellow that you might have in your color palette it can be mustard, yellow, it can be yellow, uh, bright yellow, or any tone of yellow that you have, okay? We're going to put those there. And even brown. Brown is very um, earthy, so it's a combination of yellow, red, and a little bit of blue. But because it only has a little bit of blue, we're going to consider it as a warm color, and we're going to put it on our warm color scheme for our project today, okay? So these would be our warm colors here. We have a pretty good selection to work with, so let's keep these in a separate batch. Think of them as a separate family from the cool colors, okay? So we have a warm color family here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our cool color family. All right, so for our cool color family, we have any blue tones that we can find in our color palette. Here I have a blue, kind of like a turquoise. I have a lighter blue. I have an ultramarine blue, okay? So I have a variation of different tones. If you just have blue, that'll work, okay? Whichever blue tones you have will work for your cool colors. All right, so also green tones, anything green. So regular green, yellow green, can be a lime green, um, a light green, an olive green. It can be any type of green that you have. Okay, army green. And then we're gonna move on to the violet and purple tones. So violet, purple, okay. I have those there and even a lavender or any tone of purple that you have, okay. And also gray, gray kind of represents the cold. It's a very, cool color. It's a combination of black and white. Two neutral colors making up the gray. So we're actually going to be able to use that one here in our cool color palette because it kind of uh, reminds me of a dark sky when it's about to rain. It uh, It's very gloomy and grayish. So we're going to use that in our cool color scheme. Okay. So let's go ahead and separate those. This is going to be our second family here. Remember, we're treating both warm and cool colors as different families. So let's go ahead and get started with our coloring part of the project. And we're going to be using our warm colors here for our mats. So remember to keep those separate in a um, little pile. And then we're also going to use our cool colors for our Tiffany. So each uh, one of these two palettes is going to generate a different effect. Okay, Our warm colors are going to be lively, exciting, energetic. Whereas our warm colors are going to be more calming and relaxing. And in this case, they're going to kind of form a little kind of a spooky effect. Because Tiffany was kind of like a little ghost. So that's why we're using our cool colors for our Tiffany and our warm colors for our Max. So let's get started. Okay, notice how I also use black in my picture here. Well, black and white are actually neutral colors, so we can use them in either the cool color palette or the warm color palette, okay? All right, so here is our finished version of our Tiffany. And I really like that contrast with the black background. It made our colors really pop up and made them nice and bold because I press hard with my crayon. So that's uh, the effect that you're gonna have with the uh, cool colors. Um, cool colors, again, represent something more like calmness, relaxed feeling. They can even represent a, a ghostly and perhaps even a sad feeling, depending on the subject that you're making. But cool colors are very calming and relaxing overall. Okay, so we are all done with our cool color palette, Tiffany. Now let's go ahead and move on to our warm colored mats.
All right, and here we go. Now we have our little Max that's colored in in all nothing but warm colors. And now we can see the difference between the two. We can see our little Tiffany in our cool color scheme with a nice contrast in the background. And we can see our warm color Max here with a uh, brown for the background, which kind of complements everything very nicely. So that's about it for today, boys and girls. I hope you really enjoyed this lesson with warm and cool colors and learning about George Rodriguez's Blue Dog.